What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Fed Dead Redemption, episode 37. Uh, Robert O'Neill, Oracle of Wrestling, here to uh, recap the last week in the World Wrestling Federation. Take a look ahead. A uh, lot to get into this week. Oracle, how you doing? I'm doing great. Um, <clears throat> I'm looking forward to the uh, comical uh, freezes you and I have throughout this hour. Yeah. Um, be legendary. Um, but... Um, I'm doing well. You know, SmackDown was was an incredible home run. I really thought it was a great show. Um, Raw wasn't bad either. You know, it was it was it was it was it was solid. Um, mm. I, I thought I thought it was a really good uh, you know string of TV this week, and uh, I'm absolutely definitely like really feeling the excitement for Mania now. Yeah, yeah, no, same here. I'm I'm going to Raw tomorrow night, so I'm fired up for right. that. Uh, Roman's there, so it'll be fun. Um, don't know who else is going to show up, but yeah, I'm fired up, man. Haven't been to uh, TV since before the pandemic, so mm. hopefully it's good. Uh, Duke says, hearing reports that the Fed was cooking in the land of opportunity. That is correct. Let's start there. Uh, SmackDown, hell of a show Friday night. You know, uh, they went up against the NCAA tournament. They had some tough competition, but uh, they did really everything I think they needed to do. You know, we talked a lot about when are they going to put Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn back together. They did it with the help of noted diplomat Cody Rhodes. Um, yeah, they're finally back together. You know, it seems like that match is probably going to main event night one of WrestleMania at this point. Uh, Oracle, how did you feel about kind of the opening angle and closing angle? Uh, I thought it was great. Um, Cody being the sort of middleman is hilarious. Yeah. Um, I could see people hating that. I don't hate it, but I think there's an argument to hate it. Mm. Um, when they pan to him looking on the screen longingly and proudly uh, during the hug, it was one of the most ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yep. We lost Oracle for a sec. That's no, fine, though. But yeah. Uh, yep. I'm I'm back. Uh, Folks, I'm here on standby for when Oracle's who's <laughs> internet drops out. I'll be, once he's back, I'll be going again. So. Just, just be with me. It was, it was a hell of a time, bro. I agree, Bob. I agree it was. Bob. Yeah. 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 No, it was, you know, the opening uh, was... <laughs> I think he's back. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, legendary. Legendary. Um, I think Bobby's frozen now? Or am I frozen? Um, oh my god, Bob Froze! <laughs> Bob Froze! <laughs> Good. There we go. I'm all right, just on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I pulled my bit off and got out. I said, "Where's Bob gone?" <laughs> god, you boys, you boys took a fan, and I was, <laughs> I'll just, right. I'll sit in in case. God, let's. Okay. Ooh, man, yeah, Uncle, go ahead. <laughs> Uh, what was I rambling on about? Cody Rhodes? And yeah. About how funny it was when he was looking on. That looked like mm-hmm. some shit. Like, if, have, have you ever seen, um, obviously this was much more like comical, but you, uh, um, Happy Gilmore, the end of Happy Gilmore when the, when the, when the, when the you know, yeah. the guy's mm-hmm. waving and looking down from the sky. <laughs> That's basically what it reminded me of. <laughs> it was so stupid and ridiculous, but. The hug itself was just great, an amazing pop. Um, you know, they 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 did a really good job of of, of making it work and making it make sense. Um, mm-hmm. Just a just a just a great great angle. Um, of course, they haven't announced a tag title match yet. I'm still skeptical of it being the main event. I think Joe and I've talked about it. You know, uh, I think Charlotte and Rhea is probably still going to be it. I know they mm-hmm. there were rumors that were abound on Twitter this week about it and course that was very divisive but yeah we'll see you know should it main event maybe it should i'm i'm still torn on it um as an asshole troll i kind of hope it doesn't just because i want to see the discourse if people get mad about it but <laughs> sure. um i'll probably regret feeling that way if if charlotte yes. Maria doesn't deliver um but uh <clears throat> great angle nonetheless and, and and a great way to wrap that up you know that 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 thread of the story I'm I'm definitely looking forward to what they do here. I think they're going to do the six man next week on SmackDown. I hope so. 
So I'm yeah. hoping they do it. Yeah, they really nailed it. You know, like I said, the first one kind of to set the scene, have Kevin leaving was good. And then, you know, having him come back, which I didn't really, I mean, I knew about it because I didn't watch it till today, but watching it live, you could definitely make a case like, oh, maybe he's not going to come back. Maybe they're going to do it again next week. And uh, that's when I'll do the save. But yeah, it was really great. You know, he came back and, uh, you know, the hug. I know there's been some talk about how that should have been the WrestleMania moment. I don't really agree with that. Uh, I think doing the hug there is fine. Have him on the same page going into Mania and, uh, should be a hell of a match, man. Uh, do you do you agree with Cody that you will uh, get the Jey Uso for your next haircut? I should, I should. I'm going, I think Tuesday, so I look good for Green Grappler. But I might just get you know my regular <laughs> haircut instead of Jey Uso. You should, get, you should get Sting's haircut for Green Grappler. That would get, be fitting. You bleach it, you know. Could you imagine? Or he could just, or he could just go out even longer and do the <laughs> and do the yes. modern. It'd be good. <laughs> Imagine Bob doing cosplay for Sting, and rather than simply just wearing like a mask or painting his face, he <laughs> bleaches and spikes his hair. <laughs> um, or you brought up Rhea and Charlotte as another main event. And I'm gonna be honest with you; I think they did a really good job with that segment too. Um, I thought it was great. Uh, Charlotte's promo wasn't bad, actually. She's yeah, for better promos in a long, long, long time, like years. Mm-hmm. And Rhea's promo was really good. I like the whole thing. You don't fear me, but I, I'm mad that you don't fear me. Um, the brawl. Triple H loves pull apart brawls. Yeah, they're back to doing a lot of brawls. Um, it wasn't quite as physical as I wanted. To, sometimes it's like with these pull apart brawls, you want it to be a little bit more violent. Mm-hmm. But there was enough intensity there that I enjoyed it. And I love the ending. Um, of course, the memes are just completely uh, inappropriate and absurd on Twitter with Rhea sticking her tongue out and Dom looking on disturbed um, mm. in the background, but it was it was a really good segment and and made and made you know gave that match a little bit of spark that it needed. Um, it, it still needs you know they still need to deliver more in the next two weeks before the yeah. match to make me really care about it. But you know Rhea Rhea's over enough and 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 you know I I like her enough for me to be interested in the match, but I I you know. They still need to give us a little bit of a uh, little bit of power, uh, you know, a little bit more of a power punch for me to get, you know, get really invested in it. Yeah. And I think it's definitely a step in the right direction compared to doing a, can they coexist like they're doing with the other women's feud? Like the match <laughs> will be fine, but like, I don't love that build. Do you like Rhea's promo development is kind of crazy, right? Mm-hmm. Like we Oracle and I have been fans for the longest. As long as I can remember doing these shows, we've been fans, but she was not a confident promo at all. Like no. two years ago, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Very, very cool to see. It stood out to me, but yeah, I don't yeah, know. interesting for sure. Mm-hmm. And 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 I do want to point out, it's not even so much that Bianca and Oscar's a can they coexist angle. It's just that we don't do anything to build this match, but Oscar spits poison out of her mouth. Angle. Yeah, it's one of it's a terrible build. Yeah, it's not the most important women's feud on Raw, and I, I think don't that's the problem. You know, it's another conversation Joe and I had off the air, you know, on Tuesday. Uh, yeah. Give give this match something, mm-hmm. you know. if Even if they stop now, in the next two weeks, they did a sports build like you mentioned, Joe. Mm-hmm. That'd be fine. And yeah. just do vignettes of them working out. Yeah. You know, they, they can't really do – they can't really do a hot angle now. I mean, they could do that angle that I brought up about – Bianca getting missed in the eye or whatever and having to wear an eye patch at Mania, which would pop me. Yes. But I don't know. It, it, just, it just lacks any interest at all. I, I think the match will be good, possibly even great. Uh, I definitely agree with the notion that they kind of want to make Bianca miss WrestleMania and be kind of the Shawn Michaels where she has these great matches every yeah. year at Mania. Um, but just to, it's just a badly built program. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and and sorry to jump over to Raw, but it just made me, yeah. you know, when, when you brought that up, Bobby, I, I, yeah. I kind of wanted to talk through it. But. Yeah, we'll circle back. But like, and this is interesting too. Do you think Triple H doesn't like Bianca? I think he likes her. I think he might not necessarily understand her. Yeah, I, I, I think he definitely likes her. You know, we have to remember she was there during his, you know, NXT reign, which lasted a long time. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he obviously looks, you know, looks finally on her and, and, and think she's good. But remember, he didn't give her the title. And, yeah. you know, not that that always means anything. I mean, 
you know, he he didn't give Becky the title, although I think you could argue that Becky's his least favorite of the four horsewomen. Yeah. And Vince was clearly uh, more of a Becky fan. Mm-hmm. Um, but he obviously sees Becky as a star and and treats her as such and, and books her as such. So it's not, you know, and, right. and not to mention Becky probably has a lot of pull now. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, it, it's, it's different. Bianca is currently in her sort of, she's established herself. She's a star. Right. He sees her that way, but he doesn't, I kind of, I don't think he cares about her. You know, not, I think it's not, not so way. much like a, you know. Yeah. I do think there's just, you know, if you make the rear comparison, clearly he used Rhea more prominently in NXT, right? Rhea was his one in it. And I do think it's a case of, like, as Bob said, it's just a case of he thinks she's great. I just don't think he gets her in the way that he gets Rhea, you know? And, mm-hmm. like, yeah. I'm a I'm a firm believer in wrestling. Is Wrestling is a case of beauty in the eye of the beholder. You know, you can have 10. You line up 10 talents and us three pick them in order how, how who would push most. We'd have different orders, right? And I think he sees a lot in Bianca. I don't mm-hmm. think he's, he's invested enough to really get creative with these builds. And I think that's shown – Across all of our programs under Triple H, right? Which has been a shame. Um, I mean, the lot the, the Rumble one wasn't really about her. The Damage Control one was very just steady to me, very maintenance booking. Mm-hmm. And this one seems to be more of that. So it's it's a shame. Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, we can jump back over to SmackDown. I just wanted to get into that real quick. Um, the other big thing, the the Ray and Dominic stuff continues to be great. Uh, you know, Ray refusing to fight him, even though he's getting closer and closer every week. Obviously, I think next week you finally get him to break and uh, decide to do it. He's facing LA Knight. I imagine Dom's going to get involved. But, uh, Orca, what do you think of the promo in general? And then, actually, if you want to talk about the mixed tag, too, because it ended up being a lot more fun than I thought. Yes. Uh, I think we lost Bobby again. Yeah, the, uh, the mixed tag was really good. Uh, hopefully, hopefully he comes back. Gosh, we're getting our asses kicked today. Um <laughs> But uh, thank you, Joe, for uh, helping fun, us mate. fill in our uh, disastrous internet connections. It's fun. Um, but uh, yeah, that 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 mixed tag was really good, Bobby. You're mm-hmm. back, buddy. Mm-hmm. Um, you're right about that. The mixed tag was good. Um, I, I thought um, Rhea and Dom even work well together in the ring. Weirdly enough, they do. Um, Rhea was kind of guiding poor Zelina in there some, but like her basing is so good, and, and uh, it was it was it was a fun match. Um, that segment though, man, they're still sustaining the heat, and it's impressive because they're drawing this thing out. And like Ray, like Ray, probably needs to work on his fake crying a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, that was that was bad, but everything else surrounding that little yeah. moment of like bad acting was so good it didn't matter. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, just a just a great angle. Um, Ray, like basically saying, you know, like. Like if if you weren't my kid, I would, and it got a huge pop, and um, but he couldn't do it, and uh, I still think the right play, even though it's fantasy booking that we've seen on Twitter, is that Dom just beats the shit out of Conan and uh, on 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 stage at the Hall of Fame, and that's and that's what gets Ray to 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 finally uh, to finally agree to the match, even though that's like literally within hours of of the show. Yeah. Yeah, um, I, I still think that's the right play to make. But yeah, me too. Yeah, I agree. A um, couple other things coming out of SmackDown, they added these two showcase matches to WrestleMania. I guess to get more people on the card. We kind of thought maybe they would do this, but we didn't know for sure. With you know the tag titles being in that other feud, but I guess just to do tag matches to get people on the card, it's fine. Um, I didn't really expect it. It seems like it'll make it seven and seven now. Um, instead of six and six, because we have those, and they still have to announce the uh, men's tag title match, and Rain Dom hasn't been announced yet, and we don't know what's going on with Lashley and Bray right now. Kind of feels like it's not happening, but you know, we'll see. See if anything happens tomorrow on Raw. But uh, yeah, it's cool to get some more people on the card. I guess uh, it's unfortunate that these matches don't seem to be for anything. It's just a WrestleMania showcase, they called it, but. <laughs> You know, you make it for a title shot or something, but it's fine. Yeah. They they should make it for a title shot to make it mean a little bit more, but I will say I don't hate the idea of this. I think it's a better sort of solution than a battle royal, even though I know a lot of people yeah. like battle royals. Mm. No, I'm with you. I, I agree. think you can get yeah. you can get a really good 10, 11 minute match out of this and like be crab love it. match. Yeah. Yes. Right. Like <clears throat> so, you know, we've we've seen Raquel and Liv 
qualify. Um, Liv should be on the card too. So yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I've been kind of. It seems like Ronda's going to be out because she seems like she's too hurt to even show up. Unless unless he's somehow able to work this showcase tag, I I don't know. I I, I would expect she, her to be in this. I think. You think so. I think, I think so. so. Yeah. Yeah. That's so odd. Um, mm, I know, right? <laughs> but I would guess Nikki and Candice are going to be one of the other teams that maybe make it because they've had a storyline thing going on. Okay. Uh, and then I don't know. I don't know. It's tough to say because there's so many just scattered undercard women that they Chelsea just, and Carmella. Maybe. Yeah, that probably makes yeah. no sense, but. I mean, there's others, you know. Yeah. So who's Natty, currently in Natty this? and Shotzi. You know, Natty's always going to get on the card. So you, sure. you know, I know, I know. <laughs> but like, the 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 uh, uh, the men's one's a little bit more easy. You know, like street profits are definitely going to be one of the four, right? Should yeah. be on Mania. Yeah. Um, I think uh, Legato will be one of them. That'd be cool. Um, probably the Viking Raiders because they're like the only SmackDown yeah. tag team left. Yeah, and then. Uh, it could be like this one's tough to this one's tough because yeah Gable and Otis doing that storyline right where Otis is joining Max and Mel Mom I don't know but uh, th- that could just be a backstage Braun and Rick Ricochet they're gonna be in oh it, yeah right? they'll be in it. they should be in it yeah it's tough I, I there's there's still gonna be people um that that you know aren't gonna make which is fine right. Um, you know, but uh, it's it's actually tough to kind of predict everybody there because there's so many. It's still such a loaded roster. Um, yeah, yeah. And then uh, so our other big thing from SmackDown, we kind of both predicted this last week. You know, they had Drew and Sheamus go to a double DQ. I guess it was. I thought they were going to do the double knockout. It seemed like that was the path they're taking. And then they, I was going to take a victory lap, but. Uh, <laughs> You know, went with the double DQ instead. That's fine. I mean, I think, and I think they're doing a really good job saying why Drew has, uh, oh, you know, my God, uh, my God, you're still here, Bob. There we go. You're still okay. here. Um, yeah, but they started bringing up this thing like Drew wants the Intercontinental title because he won it. It was his first title he won, and then he wasn't ready for it, and he had to do the whole thing where he went elsewhere. So I think that's a cool element to this. Um, obviously, Sheamus has a reason to want to win it. And they're doing a really good job presenting it. You know, it's a match that's going to be probably reasonably very good anyway but uh you know to present it in this way where all three guys have a reason other than it's just the intercontinental title has been a really cool thing too you're back oracle um yeah i think it's actually gonna kill it i will say as a known um you know rival of the multi-man match yeah uh, there is a big part of me that wishes we could have got like a big time gunter singles Mm -hmm. but if you're gonna do a freeway dance I mean, these are like the best guys for him to do that with because they're just going to clobber each other. You know, I think this is going to be real rough and tough. And yeah. I think Sheamus is going to pin Drew. Um, okay. That's my that's my early. I think Drew may end this year as a heel. As an early that would make sense. Yeah. I think he's a very logical guy to send Cody's direction later this year. I mean, mm. they could have some really good matches. So just as a that's a little rough prediction time on the outside looking Oracle. What do you make of this uh, triple threat business? Yeah, I, I think it's going to rule. I, like, I think some people were kind of starting to be convinced that Drew was just going to beat Sheamus clean. I was like, no, nah, this was always going to be – once once the Brock thing yeah. fell through, this was always going to be it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Sheamus is winning the belt and and uh, finally, uh, finally uh, you know, filling up his, uh, his uh, you know, living room showcase, uh, <laughs> whatever the hell it is. Grand Slam champion, man. Yeah, there you go. Um, and uh, was, wasn't there some – like photo he posted a year or two ago of like yeah. some mm-hmm. stuff that he has where like all of his victories and accomplishments <laughs> and he fin- he'll finally get to and, and, and he'll also get to me it will also feel like i know the 18 second one when he won the top that what that was that was marred with a lot of controversy this will feel like an yeah. actual mania moment for him uh if, if he wins this yeah this man does he deserve that true. right oh, yeah. he deserves that mm-hmm. you know yeah yeah, the clash sure. moment kind of earned this for real. Like mm-hmm. the clash moment was special, so yeah, I think that's a safe bet. That's definitely it. <laughs> yeah, the Brock didn't want to put him over. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, then the whole thing's coming out like this has been the plan since December now, and so I don't know, probably mm-hmm. not. I mean, they didn't do the Rumble face off to go back to this, I don't think. But there's been a lot of movement. With I mean, I think I genuinely think at one point they hoped they could convince Austin to wrestle him Brock yeah. days, mm-hmm. which I still. 
Like, while I get it's a great poster, I still think that's nuts. I mean, it pops me on a lot of levels, but, like, good lord, man, he could kill Steve, you know? Like, Yeah, that would have been bad. Um, like, at least Roman would have been able to yeah. take care of him a little bit. Well, it's more that Roman work like, Roman could work a very much a spectacle match with Austin. Yes. Mm-hmm. The spectacle of Brock is that he kicks the shit out of you. You know, like, mm-hmm. isn't it? And Austin's neck and side. I mean, I just think it would have been sad. I mean, again, I'd, it would interest me. I can't pretend otherwise. But, yeah, there was a lot of moving pieces. I mean, obviously, Bray, you know, he was, like, supposed to wrestle Uncle Howdy. And he's, he's certainly not wrestling Uncle Howdy now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, a lot of things have changed. But, yes. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah. Um, all right, so going back to Raw, you know, I think obviously we talked about Cody. His promo that he did was very good. I think he brought the fire that we've kind of been waiting for. Um, and I'm interested in seeing how this face to face goes tomorrow night with him and Roman. Probably the last time we will get it before WrestleMania. So, well, they might do a contract signing or whatever, but yeah, either way, um, great promo from Cody. Oracle, I gotta ask, what did you think of Brock and Obas? Uh, I thought it was. Clearly, like Brock wants to t- wants to get it over with and wants to head head you know head back to you know Saskatchewan. Yeah, um, he had no interest in that. He looked angry after the. He did <laughs> like legit mad after he after Omos like almost killed him. They actually they had the crowd for a while too up until like the handshake and then yeah it just kind of fell apart. Yeah, that's true. Whatever. I, I, I think this could be a total disaster. I also think it could rule, surprisingly. But yeah. I, it, it depends. Those two could overlap, too. That's yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> it could, uh, one minute it could be incredible, the next it could be a total disaster. <laughs> yeah. Um, There's definitely a chance that this is like an absolute catastrophe. And I'll log on Twitter.com and see Oracle tweet four stars. <laughs> <laughs> Because this could be your sort of mess for sure. Oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> Definitely some room for unprofessionalism here, I feel. For sure. Up there with that terrible Ronda Shotzi match everybody hated that popped me at one time or whatever show. Your favorite match on the you. show. <laughs> <laughs> um I know we had a question from earlier about uh, NXT and the the Roxanne ladder stuff. I, it feels unnecessary. I don't know why they need to do it other than to just have a big ladder match at Stand and Deliver, which they've done, you know, a million times. You could probably just have an actual match instead. I don't know. Like, it'll. I enjoy the multi person ladder matches still, but like, it doesn't feel like something you need to necessarily do. So, what's the point with her? Are they stripping her of the title or is she just going to be in the ladder match now? Apparently, something's up with Roxanne. Oh, that's, okay. that's Dave. That's not me. I'm pretty sure Dave said that. Like, there's a reason they did the angle they did. Uh, okay. No, I, I, I have no idea what that is. And again, that's not me yeah. scooping. That's I'm well, almost weird. certain Dave said that. Yeah, because there was no updates on her the whole week, and then Shawn right. Michaels tweeted something like two hours before NXT. So it's like, all right, yeah. they're gonna have an angle or whatever. But yeah, okay. Well, hope she's good. Hopefully so. I mean, she's fucking awesome wrestler. So hopefully, all is well. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Okay. Um, Oracle, anything else from SmackDown that we missed? I think we got pretty much everything. Uh, do you think LA Knight's going to do something with Stone Cold at WrestleMania? <laughs> um, mm. Sean said it's an angle, so I don't know, that's probably an angle then in that case. <laughs> I mean, is that is that a rumor, Bobby? It's been kicked around a little bit. Yeah. I know uh, Austin said, I think, today that he's not going to be there. They haven't contacted him, which means he will absolutely be there. Um, LA Knight is doing it on the live events too. Did you see that, Bob? Yeah. He's doing promos on the live events, but whether you like it or not, I will be at WrestleMania. So Yeah. Plus, they haven't really done it in a while where like a heel goes in the ring and then a legend comes out. They did it with Elias and Cena um, at WrestleMania 35, but other than that, it's kind of something that's gone away that they used to do quite a bit. So I'm seeing the segment in my in my eyes, and I think I, I think I might enjoy that one. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. LA Knight is doing a hell of a job. He is. Yeah. Remember how over he was like a week or two ago on SmackDown and music hitting and whole building popped? He's got – and it's you know what's fascinating is <laughs> he's been this exact wrestler for years now, but just that audience has finally seen him, and he was always meant for that audience, you know? Yep. It's yeah. like he probably could have been over on the main roster for the last 10 years, but he, yeah. it took him all that time to get there, and now he's there. Look, I'm not saying he's a world champion, but he's over huge. They love him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Good for him, man. It's really good stuff. Good yeah. Story. Yeah, it's good stuff. Um, Oracle, do we have anything else from this week, or should we move into our segments here? Uh, so Edge and Finn's guaranteed. Oh, yes. On the cell. 
Yeah, that got confirmed. It'll be fine. Sorry, that I mean, was me messing with my table. Sorry, that was loud. <laughs> I don't know. Like, does every big edge feud need to end in Hell in a Cell? Probably not, but they're usually okay. So, when he sticks his chin out. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> his hair's not long, though, so he can't like run his hands through it like he used to. That's true. But he can still do that. You know, <laughs> right he before he does it. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about? I love love Finn Balor, but that demon's line he had was crazy, man. He should have said, I ain't doing it. Not yeah. happening. That means he's coming out as a demon at Mania. Oh, yeah, yeah, he is. Absolutely. <laughs> what a goofy-ass chick that is. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> That's a heel, too. <laughs> yeah, it felt like he'll change. The press was the same. The yeah. same goddamn way, and it drives me nuts. <laughs> he's a great worker, but that has always amazed me that he doesn't he doesn't disconnect the styles at all. He just wrestles like Finn. It's amazing yeah. to me. Did you guys see um, Finn and Lashley were supposed to open Mania 35, but Brock changed it at the last minute? Oh, with Seth? Yeah. yeah. That match is good, too. So, like, yeah, I, Finn, Finn and Bobby killed it, man. They were in the semi main and they got the crowd going for like the four minutes that they got. Well, and they the did. women's match didn't even get any heat. What was the – hang on a second. So was that because he wanted to just go home again? Was yeah. that that deal? Yeah. So, yeah. So went out and had a shitty <laughs> two-minute match. You wanted to go home that night. I did want to go home. <laughs> Saw the Revival lose and then uh, rock back-to-back. Were you at that show live, Bobby? It was. That's the one, That's the one where after the first match you had like a – yeah, he questioned if he liked the art of professional wrestling. Did you Did you get stuck? Did you get stuck at, at, outside of – uh, the stadium, like, no, I had my car, so I mean, it was a little bit to get out of the parking lot, but I didn't take the train or whatever because I knew that would happen. Mm. Yeah, you go, folks. okay, so we can get into our first segment here. Uh, would you buy a ticket featuring Joe Holbert? I gotta find it here, real quick. There we go, take it away, Joe. Good evening, folks. I'm back. Um, don't worry, I know I'm in that position again where I did this rocky deal. That's I'm not going to do it again. I only did it then as an example of what I did last time, in case you didn't see, but I'm not going to do it again. Um, I'm here for Would You Buy a Ticket. This week we head to Fargo, North Dakota, at the Fargo Dome, which sounds like real grouts. Fight at the Fargo Dome would be what I'd be going for personally. Um, feud at the Fargo Dome. You've got a few options there, but nonetheless, let's get into it. We open with the world's tag team titles on the line as the Usos, the greatest tag team in World Wrestling Federation history, defend against Butch and Ridge Holland of the Brawling Brutes. We then move to singles competition. Shayna Baszler, opposite Shotzi, a SmackDown showcase. We have the Viking Raiders with Valhalla, opposite Legado Del Fantasma with Zelina Vega. Uh, we have the Queen Charlotte Flair defending the SmackDown Women's title against Sonya Deville. We have Rick... Oh my goodness. I'm sorry, I just saw the next match and it bewildered me. Nonetheless, we have Rhea Ripley and Raquel Rodriguez. And here we go. My boys have got some hairy lifting to do this week, some carrying. The OC are alongside Drew McIntyre. Obviously Imperium for an all-star trios bout. And the main event, big spot for young Solo Sakaa as he works with Sami Zayn on top. Interesting card this week. No code, man. Maybe he's going to be staying healthy here before the big one. Um, we got, what we got here? Three women's matches? Seven match card? Interesting, but it does beg the question, Bobby, Oracle, would you buy a ticket? Once again, he wouldn't. He was wrestling Brian Pillman Jr. Bye, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Oracle, you want to go ahead with this one? This is the weakest one yet. Yeah. Um, kind of rules, though, for that reason. I, I, I think, <laughs> see, with WB house shows, they're so cheap, you almost want to say just yes. Yeah. It's like, it, and, and the way that they work, the house style is always consistently mm-hmm. good, even now. I'm going to say yes. This is close, but I'm going to say yes. Mm-hmm. If, if I lived too far away, I wouldn't go, though. Like, if mm-hmm. I, you know, when you're out there in North Dakota country, you know, you need, that's you know that's it's tough, it's a tough yes. haul. But you know you know for the code man and and the and, and the tribal chief, I might take that haul. But yeah, you know, if I'm living there in Fargo. I think I'm gonna go over mm-hmm. to the dome and check this one out. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I think I agree. It depends how long of a uh, commute you have, because you know Usos and Brawling Brutes is very good. Uh, Solo and Sammy should be very good. Rhea and Raquel would probably be fine. Uh, mm-hmm. The six man's pretty good. There's a couple other matches that uh, don't really call out to me, but it's a house show. You know, you'll have a fun time. So yeah, I think I would buy a ticket. It is like genuinely Sami Zayn reaching that point of star power that he's working those kind of main events is astonishing. Oh, yeah. Not because he's not talented enough. We all knew he was good enough. But to see him get to this point in 2023, because, I mean, I love Solo, but that is a Sami Zayn main event. I mean, it's about him. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's the yeah. baby face there, and he's he's the guy on that particular show. It's just it's amazing to see. There is a novelty to matches like being the main event of house shows. Always will be. So, interesting yeah. show. Interesting one. Yeah, for sure. Um, all right, Oracle. Go for uh, this week in wrestling history. And uh, I got a good one for you. I didn't even tell you about it beforehand. Uh, WCW Uncensored 1995. Uh, March 19th, 1995. The first Uncensored uh, from Tupelo, Mississippi, headlined by a leather strap match with Hulk Hogan and Vader. Um, a lot going on on this show, all right? <laughs> they they got kind of ambitious. And, uh, you know, the, the King of the Road match opens the show. I like it. Um <laughs> It's not good, but I like it. Uh, you know, they do the martial arts match with Ming and uh, Jim Duggan. You get, a... <laughs> um, you get the boxer against wrestler match with uh, Johnny B. Dad and Arn Anderson, which is also very bad. <laughs> um, uh, Savage and Avalanche is a fine match. Uh, Bubba and Sting's a fine match. Falls kind of anywhere tagged to the Nasty Boys and Harlem Heat rules just because they go in that concession area and fight there for four mm. of the eight minutes. And then uh, Hogan Invader's bad because no one actually wants to lose. Um, that is the funniest finish they ever did. Yeah. Flair gets pinned, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Incredible. I just watched Super Bowl seven last night and oh, Piper took yeah. that hope. <laughs> and then this Savage pulled his feet under the ropes. Anyways. Oh. Incredible. Yeah, I've never um, seen anything like this in my life. But... Yeah, Oracle, go yeah, ahead if you have show... anything about. Oh, yeah, go ahead. You know, I think I've, the only match I've ever actually. I think I've seen this strap match. Mm-hmm. I've definitely seen King of the Road. I don't think I've ever seen anything else on that show. Oh, you need to see the Arn <laughs> boxer wrestler thing. They just make up the rules as they go along, pretty much. <laughs> Bro, Arn and Johnny B. Bad in the box of Earth Wrestling is one of the most insane things. <laughs> it's awful. It's so bad. But it's kind of awesome because it's Arn Anderson. So he plays it straight because, of course, he does. It's yeah. uh, it's quite the deal. Um, I'll be getting on Sector 97 here pretty soon. And my, and my dad and brother were at that show, and that's a that's a cooker right there, especially, that, classic, close, yeah. especially that show closer. Yeah, um, closing angle is one of the best in WCW history for sure. Yeah. For sure. I um while we're on World Change Wrestling, boys, I thought we'd quickly pop you with this. I was watching today, I was watching the WCW All Nighter. I don't know if you guys have seen this oh, or yeah. remember this. Mm. Mm. Which is for those of you unaware, this is a thing that aired um heard a couple years. This is the 95 edition. It's a six hour block of WCW. <laughs> and like in between the matches, it's the boys, you know, portraying that they're doing an all nighter. It's like Shivani, Dusty. <laughs> Um, Bobby Heenan, Heenan Gene, great, yeah. Golden Soli is there. Um, at one point, they get a Papa John's, and the delivery man is called Ron, and he just sits in front of the segments, has no fucking clue what they're talking about, which is fascinating. <laughs> like you, you assume it's like a bit, and it's just a guy pretending to be, you know, the the delivery man, and then they're like, you know, the Steiners, and he's like, yeah, <laughs> like he doesn't have any idea what's going on. It is beautiful professional wrestling, Cody. I don't know if it's on Peacock. It was no, a hidden, hidden gem. Hidden gems didn't get brought over. They did not get. So I'm probably out there somewhere on the internet though. Yeah. Um, or you yeah. use a VPN gimmick if you have to. I don't know if they if they work for the network, but um, but yeah, it's absolutely insane. So also yeah. they had um this will pop your oracle. Third greatest clash match ever, according to TBS, was the Miami Mayhem tag with Dusty and Sting versus Arn and Tully because Dusty's oh, there, so they had to, you know, <laughs> had to flatter him. That rules. <laughs> yeah. There you go, folks. Yeah. Um, all right, Oracle. We don't really have much to do with our mania card. It's kind of all set at this point. Uh uh, yeah, it's just we're kind of you know, we're playing the waiting game with Ray and Dom, playing the waiting game with the tag title, Usos and uh KO's name. Same thing with Bobby and Bray. 
that's obviously the most up in the air. And then, mm-hmm. uh, there, you know, we just have to, you know, I just have to fill up the, uh, fill up the, um, uh, tag matches, tag matches. Um, that's a tough one because, <clears throat> uh, that's probably going to be the only match. Those two tag matches are probably going to be the only ones that we won't have like fully set mm. when we do our preview next week, um, which is fine. Yeah. Um, cause they'll probably do maybe three matches this week yeah. three or four. I don't know. Um, to kind of get, I feel like that's going to be something that they wrap up final week to kind of give some sort of interest in the final week. I think so. Uh, so yeah, no, that's fine though. I mean, you know, we did a good job with it. The original time we uh, ran it out, we didn't have to change it too much. Uh, nope. so it was good. Okay. Yeah. Um, we'll do the fed five real quick. And then there's a couple things that I do want to address from, uh, last week's late night grin, uh, very provocative. Um, all right, Fed Five seems kind of easy this week. Uh, Owens and Zayn are on there. Mm-hmm. Rhea's on there. Mm-hmm. Probably Charlotte. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> it's tough. <laughs> you know? It's a tough sell. It's a tough um, Maybe Cody. Yeah, Cody works. Okay. What about those... Bray? There was there was a Bray sticker behind LA Knight. Does he not? He not yeah, that's Bray? unfortunate. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Um, all right, so we got Cody, Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, Rhea Ripley. We need one more. Hmm. I'm telling you, man, it might be Charlotte. Might be. <laughs> what about Dom? Yeah. The big man's I mean, back. I'm in a good match, and he was good in the promo with Ray. We could think about Dom what you just said there, bro. Let's just, let's just, Dom let's, had a good match. <laughs> Yeah, it's big. It's a big win. It's a big win, bro. Yeah, so let's let's throw Dom a bone again. Let's throw him another bone. There we go. So there's your Fed Five: uh, Cody Rhodes, Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, Dominic Mysterio, and Rhea Ripley. My God, it's good. It's what good a start in lineup. Yes. Um. Okay. <laughs> so I do want to talk about the late night grin bracket that I made. Spent yes. a lot of time on it. Um. Very provocative. I understand. Um, some of the first round matchups I got, uh, kind of roasted for, and I understand that. Um, I actually want to bring this back up real quick. Cody said, uh, caught up on the grin. You're six up for some of these, uh, first round matchups, which is fair. Um, so here's the thing mm-hmm. about the first round matchups that mm-hmm. I kind of explained a little bit to Meech and I was going to do a video explaining Thursday afternoon. And then I forgot until the show started. Um, so basically what I did I took, you know, I wrote WWF, WCW, TNA, slash other, and AEW, kind of named 16 from each that I liked, because I wasn't going to sit there and try and rank, you know, across companies and all that. So once I had those, you know, all the ones went into a randomizer, just kind of placed them, boom, 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 and then just kind of, yeah. <laughs> so that threw out the whole 16. So it was all random, you know, the seeds. And you could ask, how is Stone Cold a 15? And that's fair. He maybe shouldn't have been a 15 seed. But I started I started watching in a time when I think I've only seen him have like right. three actual matches. So it's all kind of nostalgia. And I know, you know, some of the other guys, that's the case too. But like for WWF in particular, there's wrestlers that I like more than Stone Cold because I've seen a lot more of them. That's fair. Um, it is not so much your method as the motivation that was my concern and that I stressed regularly throughout the show. I can believe that method and I can buy into what you're explaining, but I know you well. and I know the malice that goes into your operations. Anyone that, anyone that follows you on Twitter knows what I'm referencing here. And when I see things such as um, Samoa Joe being matched up with the aforementioned Stone Cold Steve Austin or um, Alexa Bliss having to deal with Hangman Adam Page, I just feel... And you know, I I I put my 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 feelings out there. I just feel that maybe there were other things at play. I feel like you were being a little spiteful. Um, I noticed that you you tried to slide a bit and missed the wonderful matchup, and we all just said Paul and off anyway and moved on, which was a great moment. Um, we we got our payback for having uh, Ric Flair win the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. That was disgusting. How did you not realize that as soon as you put him in that bracket, Oracle and I were going to be 
We're going to immediately yeah. use that as our excuse to just do our fucking thing, you know? I know. I, I probably shouldn't have, but, like, it you doesn't, also can't that doesn't matter, not. Man. It, look, man, it's... Unfortunately, wrestling fans, we have had to become very well-versed at, quote, separating the art from the artist. Mm-hmm. And I fucking hate that phrase, but let's be real. We have to do it to survive in professional wrestling fandom. It's like... It's just... It's honestly part of the experience. you can't watch it. You can't. They're all awful. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, this was obviously, and I'm not trying to endorse Ric Flair especially, but it's like, I couldn't, if I did the bracket, there is no way Ric Flair wouldn't be on it because I've watched so much Ric Flair and I love watching him wrestle, mm-hmm. even though I fully concede that he's a piece of shit, you know, it's just part of the wrestling experience, sadly. I wish it wasn't, but it is, so. It, yeah. was, it was really fun. Thank you for doing it, Bob, genuinely. We had such a blast with that. No, I had a great time fun. watching it, man. It was a lot of fun. I'm I'm glad we uh, all got to do that. And that, um, and it seems like everyone enjoyed Manny it. had the guts. Oh, he's the pair to go on and say, "Well, after Ray showed up and he's something else, I threw him off the screen. I threw him <laughs> off the screen. At some, at one point, someone clipped this, and I don't know where it's from, where it's from. But at one point, I challenged to fight someone, and I did this with my fists. <laughs> I don't, even, I don't even know what that was about, but someone clipped it and it popped me. So, um, <laughs> yes, it was, it was a great time. If anyone's not seeing it, it's watching this, uh, late night grin dot com. One dollar will get you access to that show every single week, and that was another great one. Manny didn't know Mark Mero and Jack what? began to lecture about emails, and <laughs> at one point Jack inexplicably turned into some sort of Mister Perfect campaign, which I was befuddled by. Yeah, Jack was um, very aggressive. He always is, man. It's who he is now. You know, it's just it's <laughs> me. He was in the chat earlier. He's still here, Jack. You got to calm down a little bit, man. It's, <laughs> it's out of control, but it was a great, yeah. great time. Thanks for doing. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, and then just one more thing: WWE this- UK twenty three is a hit. They did a really good job with the game. Uh, develop or uh, uh, built nicely on the stuff we liked last year. Um, yeah, check it out if you think you would be into a World Wrestling Federation video game. How is War Games? Um, it's fine. Everyone brings a lot of weapons into the ring, which is a bummer. And yeah. then when all eight people get in there, it's very easy to lose track of who you're controlling. <laughs> so maybe you should do like a three on three one. It'd be easier. But you know, for the first year of it being in, I think they did a good job with it. It's not unplayably broken. So, a couple other questions: How many released wrestlers are on the game? I feel like not many, right? Yeah, not a ton. That limits my ability to enjoy WCW arenas, unfortunately. Um, I also, saw, I saw that one person make the uh, Wolfpack sting, and I kind of. Well, yeah, that's that. The creator wrestler looks beast. Tape Is that said, the... tape said, I hate tomato sting, but uh, I respect the person. <laughs> I saw that. Yeah. It was um, the creator wrestler thing looks great this year, but it looks like people are creating like just spot on, right? It does, yeah, it's very good. Um, also, does the game feature the stand up, sharp, and fight me theme? It does. <gasps> oh, dear, I, I may have, 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 have just lost 60 pounds right there, right folks. I may have to put down the cash for that one. That sounds like some real grips. She right. also has she also has Lily still, and uh, well, there was a cut scene where she was down, and then like the lights went out, and suddenly she was back up. So I don't know if you could turn that off or. There was what? Hold yeah, on, like a, like a mid match cut scene. It did what? Okay, stop. Hold the phone. So you Alexa Bliss is having a match on WWE 2K, and then what happens? Mm-hmm. So she gets like taken down. Like middle yeah. of the match, just randomly, so the lights go out, and then they come back up, and she's uh, up there, and you know she's standing now. It's like an Undertaker <laughs> sort of thing, but just as like normal Alexa with like a just yeah. a normal human gear on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because she's no, she doesn't have any like the spooky gear. It just she has Lily with her. But she didn't do any of that when she had to stand up and sharp and fight me, did she? No, what? No, no she didn't do any of it. She was just a wrestler. She says Benny was the most downloaded created wrestler after the first day. I saw that, yeah. Yeah. The least surprising thing ever. But of of course, that's how it would be. I I left him off the bracket as a favor to everyone. As a favor. I didn't want to put you guys in that position. I really didn't know who you was doing a favor to then, and you just said everyone, and it made it funnier somehow. (laughs) I was very intrigued as to who the favorite. I assume to yourself in some way. Man. <laughs> you know what the worst part about that would have been? I've been like, oh, he's better than this guy. Oh, you and Manny both would have been two votes every time, and then we would have, Jack, yeah. Matt, and I would have to play defense. It would have been, it would have been disastrous, <laughs> man. It really would have been. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. I think we're done. Unless anyone has anything else they want to talk about. Um. Oracle, anything to plug? 
Hmm. Grin Grappler on Tuesday. I'll be watching those staying matches tomorrow night. Yes. Preparation. <clears throat> um, the flagship on Thursday. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then Mania Weekend starts next, or Mania Week, our Mania Week journey will begin next uh, weekend with uh, yeah. March 25th. WrestleMania 19, Grin Along. Hell yeah. March 26th, we'll be right back here, 6.30 Eastern. Uh, Joe, you're welcome to join us if you'd like. Oh, I'll be there for sure. For the WrestleMania 39 preview show. What up? Uh, Tuesday, March 28th, 8 p.m. Eastern. Deciding the Decade WrestleMania edition. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh Possibly a game night on Wednesday night, correct? Or Thursday Probably night? For, Th- yeah. Thursday night, yeah, because Wednesday's Dynamite. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also uh, the debut of AW All Access. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but True. Actually true, yes. Adam, Rolls <laughs> Ring, or, uh, Adam Roll. Adam, mm-hmm. Adam Cole's in-ring return. <laughs> um, Thursday night, game night. Uh, the flagship take place on March 31st following... Supercard of Honor, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, and Rampage. And, and Rampage, Rampage, right. Thank Old you. time slot, yep. Right. Um, <clears throat> so that'll be about 11.30 p.m. Eastern start time, roughly, maybe? Somewhere probably 11, there. yeah. Probably 11.05. 11. Yeah, yep. 11.05. Um, WrestleMania review show, night one. Very late. <laughs> yeah. On Saturday evening. WrestleMania night two. Review show very late uh, Sunday evening. Indeed, and it's a great plug too. And then it dropped out Shows. right at the end. Right go. at the end, beautiful. Um, one also, one other thing you might remember, Bob, that we did. Uh, we did this show once for a time called the Ultimate Show, but actually good. Yes. which was a, a where we stole the WWE Network's concept that they do badly. Mm-hmm. We may do that for WrestleMania on Thursday. Okay. I would like us to do a concept show on Thursday again. So Yeah, that'd be fun. We may just may for the flagship this week, coming week, do um do that. We may we may do some fantasy booking of an all time WrestleMania card. I think that could be a good time. So that'd be fun. But the rest was called I'm gonna do a full tweet sometime tomorrow. Um probably run, running down the whole schedule. But um as Oracle mm-hmm. said, if nothing else, it will kick off on Saturday night with the uh with the big time WrestleMania 19 Grinlon, which I know Bob, you and I are, are locked in for. I don't know who else is going to show you. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Um, I would like to get the Hooper in the building because he's not seen that real music, has never heard it. <laughs> he's just discovered today that Ricky Steamboat was good, so he's learning, finding his way in this sport. Um, so yes, that's 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 where we're going to kick off, and we really do. You know, last time we had a blast doing it, and we intend to kind of do the same this year in terms of of, of really giving you guys some uh, some fun. You know, some fun bonus content around all the wrestling that's on on WrestleMania week. It's a very, very cool time of the wrestling calendar, so I'm it excited. Is. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, that'll do it for us. Uh, as Oracle and Joe pointed out, we'll be back multiple times in the next few days. Uh, join us for one of those times. I hope you enjoyed this show and enjoy this outro. <laughs>